good morning everyone welcome to the platform of the new lyceum for english literature in today's lecture i am going to discuss comedy its forms its kinds and its types from its origin to the present day how has it evolved from the classical from the old comedy from the greek comedy to the present tragic comedies to the comedy of minas that entire lecture will be very comprehensive including all the features all the types of comedy let's start with the beginning all right let's start with the beginning and in the beginning we have the muse of comedy as you know that in greek literature in the classical literature there are nine muses and a particular muse inspires a particular genre of literature a particular form of literature the muse of comedy is thalia the muse of comedy is thalia and thalia was the daughter of the god of gods and his name was zeus thalia was the daughter of zeus and nemosin the eighth born of the nine muses eighth born of the nine muses is thalia and thalia is the muse of comedy right thalia is the muse of comedy means the greek people the greek comedians were inspired from thalia and in inspiration they wrote plays and such plays were not tragic instead they were basically satiric plays and such satiric plays were earlier called comedies as there were only two distinction tragedy and comedy tragedy dealt with violence tragedy dealt with bloodshed tragedy dealt with revenge and comedy was not violence whatever was not in violent form was called comedy for example you can take the italian magnum opus divine comedy there is nothing short of comedy there is nothing short of comic elements but that is comedy because it was not a tragedy thalia is the muse of comedy thalia was the daughter of zeus and nemosin and there are total nine muses in greek culture in greek literature and out of nine eighth was thalia all right the eighth muse was thalia and then we come to the definition of comedy as you know that wordsworth in his poetics defined what the tragedy is tragedy is an imitation of an action that is serious complete and of certain magnitude in language embellished with each kind of artistic ornament several parts being found in separate parts of the play means aristotle dedicated 14 chapters to tragedies but there is only one chapter on comedy in poetics and that is chapter number 5 exclusive chapter on comedy is chapter number 5 in the poetics what is comedy let's see the definition here in the most common literary application a comedy is a fictional work in which the materials are selected and managed primarily in order to interest and amuse us this is the function of a comedy right the function of comedy is to in a uh, amuse us the characters and their discomfitures engage our pleasurable attention rather than our profound concern when you watch a play you are not supposed to be serious how do you enjoy you enjoy a piece of play right kaise enjoy karte hain discomfiture discomfiture of the characters right discomfitures engages our pleasurable attention rather than our profound concern we are made to feel confident that no great disaster is going to occur while we are watching a comedy and usually the accent turns out happily for the chief characters accent turns out happily for the chief characters and especially the romantic comedies end with marriage right chief characters is marriage that is the happy ending of comedy 
द टर्म कॉमेडी इज कस्टमरली अप्लाइड ओनली टू प्लेस फॉर द स्टेज और टू मोशन पिक्चर्स इट शुड बी नोटेड हाउ ए वो दैट द कॉमिक फॉर्म सो डिफाइंड ऑल्सो ऑकर्स इन प्रोज फिक्शन as well as narrative poetry as you know that henry fielding described his own novels comic epic in prose comedy could be in the narrative form comedy could be in the poetic form comedy could be in the fictional form but here in today's lecture we are just focusing on comedy as a dramatic form right not as a narrative form not as a comic form a prose form but just a dramatic form of comedy is to be discussed here in the class right comedy is a form of entertainment the basic purpose is to please us to entertain us to entertain to amuse and to make us happy right how do we happy hum happy hote kaise hain happy hote hain by seeing the characters and their discomfitures their way of wearing clothes their way of speaking their style right their acting always amuse us that is called comedy and if you talk about the origin of comedy origin of comedy and tragedy both starts are both start in greek tragedy as well as comedy both start in greek and in honor of dionysus dionysus was the god of fertility was the god of wine guide uh, god of productivity god of ecstasy god of sex and above all he was the god of theater right and during the festival of dionysus tragedies were performed and in honor of dionysus comedies were also started right there is a critic northrop frye northrop frye wrote a book anatomy of criticism and in anatomy of criticism he divided he compared genre of literature with particular seasons genre of literature with particular season and comedies compared to spring season right a type of drama that celebrates or satirizes the follies of characters a type comedy is a type of drama that satirizes the follies of characters although the comic impulse is a universal human trait the particular form of dramatic comedy has been traced as a tragedy to its origins in the primitive celebration of spring designed to ensure a prosperous seed time and the health and longevity of the community right the season is spring and comedy emerges in the spring season spring is known for productivity spring is known for preservity spring is known for health and longevity and comedy is the product of that season according to northrop frye this is the view that has been readily adopted and convincingly described in myth criticism the mythic approach helps us to explain comedy's emphasis on the social and the collective as opposed to tragedy's focus on the isolated individual tragedy is just so uh, tragedy focuses on an isolated individual whether it is oedipus the rex whether it is hamlet macbeth king lear julius caesar right it focuses on individual character while comedy is a social phenomenon it engages all the characters of the society it is a type of social drama which engages the entire society from the upper class to the lower class right all the boundaries between the aristocrats and lower class people blow here a type of carnivalesque happens at the end of the play that is comedy tragedy means isolation of the character and comedy means assimilation of all the characters socially comedy can be seen from two perspectives one implies the idea of carnival 
कार्निवल मीन्स फेस्टिवल राइट ब्लरिंग ऑफ बाउंड्रीज राइट अपर एंड सोशल क्लासेस ऑफ ब्लड हियो आर द कलेक्टिव एजर्शन ऑफ फ्रीडम इन द फेस ऑफ द रिप्रेसिव स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ सोसाइटी कॉमेडी इन द कार्निवल मोड थम्स इट्स नोज एट द पावर्स दैट बी वेदर दे बी गॉड्स और गवर्नमेंट एंड अल्टरनेटिव व्यू सीज कॉमेडी एज एन इसेंशियली कंजर्वेटिव फोर्स Providing a release through a ritualized escape goat figure, which ultimate reproduction permits the restoration of the society's traditional values. Means there are various critics, various ages, various opinions, various thoughts. Some think that comedy is a social phenomenon and it blurs the boundaries. Right? It blurs the boundaries, and people across the society they come and they. Uh, they enjoy that particular feature they enjoy the carnival they enjoy the feast they eat together they sit together they drink together they enjoy together that is a social phenomenon there are some critics who believe that comedy is not that type comedy is a type of conservative performance comedy is a type of conservative force and it provides a release through a ritualized escape goat figure which whose ultimate reproduction permits the restoration of the society's traditional values and ultimately traditional values are restored for example shakespearean comedies ultimately traditional values are restored lovers marry at the end of the play and marriage is a social phenomenon right marriage is a traditional value marriage keeps traditional values inside it and finally that traditional values are gained so different opinions single thing single objective and the objective was to entertain and in fact when the comedies were written when the people when the dramatists were acting the performing comedies they wouldn't have the these ideas in their mind they perform the plays for the sake of the audience for the sake of entertainment for the sake of pleasure they wouldn't have the ideas like that otherwise they would have flopped players all right so this was the view of myth criticism not her fry and then i come to the origin of comedy comedy and tragedy both started in athens in athens there were annual competition not only of tragedies but of comedies as well right in honor of dionysus greek plays greek plays were performed greek a uh, greek playwrights like aeschylus like sophocles like euripides wrote tragedies at the end of the month the best plays were awarded aeschylus won the prizes several times and after the death of aeschylus sophocles stood first maximum number of first time first prize was won by sophocles right and as far as comedy is concerned comedy also started in that festival but also in comedy at the city of dionysia starting in 486 bc 486 bc means 2023 plus 486 years ago comedy was started in the city of dionysia the linia linia festival started having comedy competitions in 440 bc right another festival like dionysus festival linia festival started having the performance of comedy comedy competition in 440 bc there were normally five comedies that competed but during peloponnesian uh, uh, peloponnesian war the number was reduced to 3 earlier four tragedies three tragedies along with a satire was performed in the festival of dionysia and then five comedies were performed together and then after this war during the peloponnesian war the number of 5 was reduced to number 3 now three plays a bunch of three plays were performed right unlike the writers of tragedy who put on a series of four plays 
the writers of comedy produced one comedy a piece and from three it came to one right a tragedian was supposed to perform four plays three tragedies and satire and a comedian was supposed to perform a single piece right the writers of comedy produced one comedy a piece right one comedy a piece ka competition hota hai in the city taj hai linia festival and then who is he whose picture are you seeing here this is the god dionysus god of fertility god of wine god of ecstasy god of sex god of productivity right god of theater athens the dionysian god of wine ritual madness theater fertility god of vegetation was dionysus dionysus was the son of zeus and dionysus is the only god who was twice born once from his mother and then from his father right twice born and that's why he was not accepted by the olympian gods and he remained on earth he could not go on olympia mountain and here he started the cultivation of grapes and that's why he is called god of wine god of ecstasy in roman he is known as bacchus in roman he is known as bacchus also as libo if you remember the poem uh, the ode to nightingale mr john keats has referred dionysus as bacchus bacchus is the roman counterpart libo is the roman counterpart of dionysus after greek comedies you will come to the roman comedies and in roman comedies this dionysus is known as bacchus the word comedy seems to be connected by derivation with the greek verb meaning to revel and comedy arose out of the revels associated with the rites of dionysus right the greek word comedy means revel early source of comedy is the poems of archilochus 7th century bce and hipponax which contain crude and explicit sexual humor crude and explicit sexual humor later became the source for comedies a third origin as cited by aristotle lies in the phallic songs which were sung during dionysic festival phallic songs origin number 1 dionysus number 2 in the songs of archilochus and hipponax and then according to aristotle the origin of comedy lies in phallic songs that were sung in honor of dionysus so these are the supposed origins of comedy during 4th 5th or 6th century we see this is dionysus this is bacchus this is also known as libo and he is called the god of theaters right comedy is a greek word and in greek comedy means to revel right comedy means to revel are the two greek writers archilochus and hipponax wrote about crude and explicit sexual humor and they are supposedly one of the origins of uh, comedies and phallic songs sung in honor of dionysus could also be said one of the sources or uh, one of the origins of uh, comedy all right and after the origin of comedy the third origin one more guess is satire plays after the performance of three tragedies one satire play was also performed a combination of four plays means a tetralogy was performed in honor of dionysus as far as tragedies concerned three plays were tragedies and one was a satire play and that satire is also the origin of comedy in the classical greek dramatic festival of dionysus the comic afterpiece that followed the tragic trilogy 
and implicitly marked the high seriousness of the preceding age. Such a play used to mark the high seriousness of the tragedies. Satires were pleasure seeking, hedonist, dressed in goat skins, masks, tails, and pointed ears. And tragedy, literally, tragedy means goat songs. People used to sacrifice goat and then used to wear the skin of the goat. Right at the time of performance, while acting the play, they used to wear different dresses, and dresses were made of goat skin and their performance usually represented a burlesque of a popular myth. Right, the only complete satire play that has survived is Euripides' Euripides' Cyclopus performed in 438 BC. Who is Euripides? Euripides is one of the three pillars of Greek tragedy after Aeschylus, Sophocles, Euripides comes. And Euripides is, was the one who introduced do ex machina in his plays, divine appearance through machine to solve the problem. Right? And uh, Euripides also introduced fictional plots in tragedies and Euripides is known for his play media and only satire play that had survived right for three plus one after the trilogy a fourth play was performed that was called satire and the only survived play is cyclops as by mr euripides and this is the character one of the characters who has goat skin and he is performing the satirical plays. Satires used to satirize, used to mock the high seriousness of the preceding age. High seriousness of the preceding age was mocked by satirical plays and this could also be one of the origins of comedy. Alright, now I am talking about the origins of comedy and you must remember all the points as you are preparing for a very serious examination. If you are preparing for your MA examination, if you are preparing for your graduation examination or UGC net examination, these points are very essential, very crucial, very important. You should note down all these points in your diary and they will help you throughout your life. Now, after the origin, I come to the old comedy that is known as classical comedy and it is also known as Aristophanic comedy. As Aristophanes was the best practitioner, Aristophanes is called the father of old comedy. Father of old comedy, father of classical comedy is Aristophanes. Aristophanes was a comedian and his main objective was to satirize the popular philosophers, the popular demagogues, the popular thinkers and the popular aristocrats. The origin of comedy lies in satire. The origin of comedy lies in satire and Aristophanes satirized the popular philosophers, especially Socrates. And Plato said that it was Aristophanes' satire because of which Aristotle was, so, sorry, Socrates was given the bowl of poison. Right, Socrates, the disciple of Plato, Plato's disciple was Aristotle and Aristotle's disciple was Alexander the Great. Plato wrote several books and in almost all his books, Socrates appears as an interlocutor. And in one of his books, he says, write that it was Aristophanes who provoked the king to give a bowl of poison to Socrates. Right? Basically, that is not our today's issue. Aristophanes wrote satiric plays. Right? He used to satire. He used to caricature the popular characters of the society popular characters of philosophy, popular characters of politics. The plays consisting of loosely related episodes. 
loosely related episodes were first performed in Athens for the religious festival of Dionysus. And you know that entire literature originates from religion. Entire literature originates from literature, whether it was Indian literature, whether it was Christian literature or Greek or Latin literature. In honor of Dionysus, religious festival of Dionysus, classical comedy dates to the 5th century, means around 2500 years ago. The sole extant example of this old comedy are 11 plays of Aristophanes. 11 plays of Aristophanes, all of them characterized by extravagant plots and biting satires of individuals and institutions. These plays consist of debate, debate between two characters and address to the audience by the chorus representing the author's point of view on topical issues. Chorus with the mouthpiece of the dramatist, mouthpiece of the playwright and they used to represent author's point of view on topical issues and a series of broad comic scenes followed by a wedding or a feast to conclude the action. Right, broad comic feast, right, broad comic feast, wedding, satire, right, extravagant plots, and satires on individual, satires on institution, these were the primary essential parts of old comedies started by Aristophanes known as classical comedies or old comedies or Aristophanic comedies. Alright, and uh, this is a type of character. People used to wear such masks to perform the plays. In the course of the play, characters would deliver scurrilous invective against various well-known people. Invective means high, highest form of satire. An invective is always satire on individual. One such target was Socrates, ridiculed in Aristophanes the cloud as a fraud and an atheist. The best known of Aristophanes comedies, Lysistra is a striking example not only of old comedy but also of comedy in general. It depicts successful efforts of Athenian women to put an end to the Peloponnesian war. How? By refusing to have sex with their husbands while the war lasts. In the triumph of love over war or more precisely sex over death, the play sounds a basic comic principle. Lysistra is a play by Aristophanes and it is a prime example of comedy. All the essential elements that were later popularized by the Latin playwrights, Roman playwrights, Elizabethan playwrights, Unsabka Krax Jaha, that lie in the play Lysistra. Right, Lysistra was a comedy play by Aristophanes. The Cloud was a play, a, a comic play by Aristophanes. And the main target of the play was Aristotle, uh, was Socrates, and Socrates was targeted. He was caricatured as an atheist or as a fraud. And not only the cloud, but there are several plays like the wasps, the frog, right, in which he caricatured popular personalities like uh, Socrates. All right, and not only Socrates, but his main target, one of the main targets was the Greek tragedians, uh, especially Euripides. And this was the basic structure of uh, the plays. Classical plays are old comedies. Popular six part structure, very, very important for UGC net examination. Six part structure of classical comedy. The first part is obviously known as prologue. Prologue is an introduction in which basic fantasy is explained and developed. Basic 
infancy is explained and developed that is the first part first part is known as prologue the second part is called parodos parodos entry of the chorus that is the entrance ode when the play starts chorus enters and when the chorus enters they sing a song they sing an ode and that is known as parodos parodos the third part is again again means conflict again means conflict the contest or again a ritualized debate between opposing principles usually stock characters two speakers debate the issues and the third part third part is called again that is conflict that is contest that is the debate and the fourth part is called parabasis parabasis means to advance to come forward parabasis in which the chorus addresses the audience on the topics of the day chorus addresses the audience on the topic of the day means drama was not merely limited to the stage actors but it was a part of society audience was also involved unko bhi yahan par involve kiya jata tha on the topics of the day and hurls is curious criticism at prominent citizens and the people of target was attacked then in this fourth section that is called parabasis and then the fourth after fourth you have the sixth sixth is called epirema epirema means afterward what happens afterward and entod that is answering ode antiperenia answering afterwards and the series of farcical scenes and finally sixth part was exod exod means exit right exit exit of all the characters final banquet or wedding the chorus often were dressed as animals while the characters wore street dress and masks with grotesque features these are the six constituent parts these are the six part structure of classical comedy right just remember the name number 1 is prologue number 2 parodos number 3 again number 4 parabasis number 5 epirema epirema has two more parts ent ode that is answering ode and anti periphema that is answering afterwards and finally exode that is exit and exit kaise hoti hai wedding se banquet se celebration se these are the six part structure of classical comedy six part structure of old comedy six part structure of classical comedy all right and uh, old comedy and stock characters who are called stock characters stock characters are known as type characters they were type and they were introduced in almost all the plays having same characteristics having same role and having same dress they were known as stock characters they were a type of flat characters right as em foster says that there are two types of characters round character and flat characters so stock characters were a type of flat characters they were same in all the plays everywhere the old comedy of the greeks had three stock characters they had three stock characters number 1 whose interactions constituted the standard plot number 1 elazon elazon means imposter imposter and self deceiving braggart second one is iron and from this word this character iron you have the phrase you have the word irony or self derogatory and understanding character whose contest with elazon is central to the comic plot iron and elazon they were involved in conflict they were involved in again and this was the central part of comedy and the third one is 
bomb locus that was a buffoon that is a fool whose antics add an extra comic element so these three were the stock characters in the classical comedy elizan iron and bomb looks and bomulo jaha bomb looks and nathro fry added another character to this category fourth one is agrocos the rustic are easily deceived character and identified the persistence of these types very broadly defined in comic plots up to our own time so now you understand what the stock characters mean the stock characters mean they were the characters that appear in all the plays having same characteristics having same traits having same roles number 1 is elizon elizon was an impostor a thug self deceiving braggart second one is irens irens means a self derogatory and understanding character and the third one is abomolocus that was a buffoon and the fourth one was introduced by nathro fry as a agricos right so these were the four stock characters in the old comedy in the classical comedy and then there was another character miles gloriousus miles gloriousus means braggart warrior braggart warrior a person who looks like a warrior but he doesn't have the courage to fight he doesn't have the courage to speak boldly he wears all the clothes all the wearings that a hero should wear but he lacks courage he is diffident and shakespeare's falstaff the best example of this type miles glorious or braggart warrior right and classical comedy a stock character who boasts of his military valor but is usually shown to be a coward shakespeare's falstaff is a type of braggart warrior as is captain boyle in c nocasis play juno and the peacock these are the characters miles glorious miles glorious in english it means braggart warrior right he looks like a warrior but he doesn't act like a warrior right jo dikhate bahut hain hote kuch nahi unko bola jata hai miles glorious right miles glorious braggart warrior and you can find glorious a miles glorious in your neighbor as well in your class as well everywhere you can meet such persons they are like the heroes of our film industry right they show courage but in fact they don't have such courage all right now come to the next point from the old comedy now we come to the middle comedy in middle comedy we have only one example only one play have middle comedy mein and that middle comedy a play survived play is by aristophanes and the name of the play is plurus the name of the play is plurus written around 338 bc is the sole surviving example of the middle comedy a form that implied parody and satire of classical myths this is the feature parody and satire of the classical myths is the main topic is the main essence of middle comedy and we have only one surviving example a play that was written by aristophanes under the title plurus right that is old comedy for that is middle comedy and from middle comedy we come to the new comedy new comedy father of new comedy is known as minando father of new comedy is minando he was also greek and he had developed from the old old comedy from the classical comedy or uh, what did he do kiya kya tha usne he introduced fictitious plots in comedies he introduced fictitious plot in his comedies and his comedies are not personal satires 
as much as Aristophanes' comedies were. By the end of the 4th century BC, middle comedy had given way to new comedy, a form employing stock characters. A firm employing stock characters such as Iron and Elizabeth and plots focusing on domestic issues in involving younger lovers, clever servants and greedy old man. Younger lovers, clever servants, greedy old men. The great figure of new comedy in Greece is Minando, imported to Rome in the second and third century BC and such plays the new comedies were imported to Rome and in Rome they were best practiced by Plates and Terence and from Roman comedies right Elizabethan comedies Renaissance comedies were formed Renaissance comedies were based on such new comedies right new comedy received further development at the hands of Plates the author of 21 extant plays, Terence credited with six surviving plays, the other popular comic form, the other popular comic form farce developed in Sicily and southern Italy and achieved its renaissance expressions in the Commedia del Arte. Commedia del Arte is the type of Italian comedy. Commedia del Arte is Italian comedy, it means new comedy is spread across Europe. Across Europe from new comedy, Latin comedies were formed by Plates and Terence and then in Sicily a form of comedy was developed and that form is called farce and in Italy a form of comedy was developed that is called Commedia del Arte. New comedy employed stock characters, stock characters I hope you know now and plots drawn from contemporary bourgeois life. Contemporary plot means fictitious plot. He did not focus on the great personalities of the antiquity, great personalities of the current time, but he focused on individual. He focused on contemporary bourgeois life, the formulas of which were adopted by later Roman writers for the comic stage. It offers mildly satiric view of contemporary Athenian society. Mildly satiric view of contemporary Athenian society rather than harsh satire on Socrates, harsh satire on any demagogue. It was a bit mild. Right? In comparison to classical comedy, new comedy was less satiric. All right? From new comedy, Latin comedy or Roman comedy was formed. The Romans, how did Romans perform plays? The Romans used to travel with their plays using constructible sets. Pura theater hi le karke jaya karte the. Privately funded by people seeking political prestige. They were funded by the political leaders. They were funded by the political leaders and those political leaders who wanted to get prestige, who wanted to get known among uh, the society, they used to fund. Right? They wore simple costumes, masks, sometimes hats to show that the character has returned from a tour. They used to wear hats so that you could know that he is coming from an odyssey. He is returning from a long journey. And then not a competition but audience satisfaction was key. During the Greek comedies, there was a competition to win the first prize. But here, reader response theory works. The readers, the audience's satisfaction was more important than winning the prize. Prize was not important now, audience satisfaction was important. So, they wore masks, they wore hats, they wore simple costumes 
right simple cons uh, costumes they lead towards simplicity right and they were privately funded and roman theatrical persons were roaming across the city right carrying constructible sets wherever they wanted to perform they set their paraphernalia and then started playing greek theater intended to celebrate a religious festival dionysia for the romans the first theater was built next to a temple which seemed to justify it right this was the imitation roman tragedies ah uh, sorry classical comedies were performed during the festival of dionysus right near the temple of dionysus and roman comedies were also performed around the temple a theater the first theater was built next to a temple right this was parallelism and second roman theater was independent from religion and old comedies greek theaters were not independent greek theaters were totally dependent on religion religious themes greek theater used the concept of deus ex machina sudden arrival of god from a machine where a god was put in place to resolve the antagonist plot but roman comedies did not use this type of sudden arrival greek comedy dealt with explicitly theological issues such as new religion versus customary worship but in roman plays there was nothing like that these plays were not related to religion at all and once they were not related to religion at all then they were independent they were independent and they were basically politically funded so their task was not to eulogize god or goddesses but their task was to eulogize that particular person who was funding and you know fund is more important than anything else all right in the turning point in roman drama most important question the turning point in roman drama came in 240 bce 240 bce when a slave named livius andronicus translated homer's odyssey into latin who translated homer's odyssey into latin livius andronicus translated homer's odyssey into latin homer's odyssey was translated into latin by livius andronicus and in around 240 bc and he became one of the sources one of the propagators of uh, roman comedies among the first and most successful of those early latin dramatists was gannius navius gannius Navius, whose career spanned several decades, he adopted Greek tragedies, mostly Euripides' plays like Hector, Iphigenia, the Trojan Horse, and also comedies, especially Menander's Colax, blending with great skill Hellenic and native Italian elements to suit his audience's taste. if not the originator of roman drama he was without doubt is the first to major star he is the first major star of uh, the roman drama you can write down his name in his in your notes apne notes mein लिख लिया करिए दीज आर द वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स राइट रोमन एंड देन इन रोमन यू हैव प्लेटस एंड देन यू हैव टेरेंस प्लेटस एंड टेरेंस इंस्पायर्ड द एंटायर जनरेशन ऑफ कॉमेडी राइटर्स कॉमेडी प्ले राइट ही इज द अर्लीएस्ट रोमन ड्रामेटिस्ट हुज वर्क सरवाइव्स होल इनफैक्ट द अर्लीएस्ट लैटिन ऑथर इन एनी जानरा 
who has a work preserved entire. He is the first known professional playwright in the Western civilization. First known professional playwright in the Western play, uh, civilization that is Plato's and then the Plato's comedies. Plato's comedies revolve mostly around daily life and average people. Superficially, the stuff of Greek new comedy as opposed to the politically oriented old comedy of the classical age or the spoof of tragedy popular in post classical middle comedy. Plato's, however, generates humor in a different way from Menendarian comedy, often extreme personality types set in outlandish situations, platonic characters are a group are reminiscent of Aristophanes' creations more than Menander's. Indeed, Plato's plays are peopled with devious pimps, greedy prostitutes, lust young men, lustful old men, tortured mothers and torturing wives and most of all crafty slaves who delight in deceiving their masters. These were the characters, stock characters, not stock characters, but they were new characters developed by Plates, used by Plates in his comedies. All right. And then after Plates, you have Terence, who was also a Roman playwright, and he wrote six plays. Six plays have survived, written by Terence. Right? He gave near perfect form and expression in Latin to the comedy of manners. And then there is another very important term called fabulae palliate. Fabulae palliate. Fabulae palliate means the imitation of the Greek plot by the Latin writers. These were Roman plays in the Greek style. Pallia means clock in Greek. Clock means cloth. Kapde. Right? Greek model jo plays the, they are called fabulae palliate. Fabulae palliate are usually set in Greece. Greece may setting features mostly Greek characters and as for as we can tell, based their plots on Greek originals. They imitated not only the plots, they imitated the characters, they imitated the setting, they imitated the dialogues, they imitated everything from Greece and they were written in Latin and they were called Fabulae Plate. Right? Fabulae Palate. The only complete extant fabulae palate are the comedies of Terence and Plates. They started their career in imitation of the Greek comedians, in imitation of uh, Aristophanes and Minando. Plates introduced Roman manners and customs to the place and filled the place with boisterous humor and musical performances. While what was the contribution of Terence? Terence kept his plays close to their Greek originals and sometimes combined two plays into one. Consequently, a common misconception is that the genre is inherently comedic. In fact, any Roman play that is based on Greek drama qualifies as fabulae palliata. Fabulae palliata is any play that is modeled on Greek classical style, Greek classical plays. All right. Old comedy, new comedy, Latin comedy, Roman comedy, fabulae palliate. Right. In today's class, I wind up here. This is the first lecture on comedy and you will get a long lengthy video on comedy once again because things that are left Commedia del Arte, that is an Italian comedy from stock characters in Italian comedy, then Renaissance comedy, then examples of Renaissance comedy, Romantic comedy or Elizabethan comedy, Nathro Fry's views on Elizabethan comedy, then comic women, tragic men, satiric comedy, after satiric you have comedy of manners or artificial comedy and anti-sentimental comedy then sentimental comedy and then you have drama of sensibility 
and after the drama of sensibility you have farce and then you have after farce high comedy and low comedy and then comedy of humors then comedy of manners comedia del arte and then city comedy and comedy of minas and modern comedy right anti romantic comedy and then modern tragic comedy and finally samuel beckett's absurdist comedy right so these are finally the sitcom that is known as situation comedy the play that you watch on your tv serialized form so these are the points that are still left and i will complete these points in my next video i hope ki aapko pasand zarur aaga and please wait for the second video on comedy and you will get that very soon thank you so much for being with me thank you so much for watching the video so attentively all the best good luck